When you mention to someone that you have an addiction, everyone's first thought is drugs. You have a drug addiction. But no, my addiction for me was video games. I spent upwards of 10,000 hours playing and consuming content around them. Time that, while I enjoyed, severely held me back. And addictions, although not always, are usually installed early. And that's what happened with me. I was always classified as a gamer. My, family's always, my family always described me as a gamer, someone who could never stop looking away from the screen or playing video games, playing on the DS or the PlayStation. And to put into perspective how many hours I wasted, I'll quickly go over my screen time on each game that I've played. So these are not accurate, but this is roughly how much I've spent. So first, first offender, Minecraft, 1,000 hours. No, no topping that, a minimum of 1,000. 1,000 hours on Fortnite, 1,000 hours on Overwatch, 1,000 hours on Pokemon, and 1,000 hours on Roblox. And then we have 500 hours on SCP Secret Lab, 500 hours on Terraria, 250 hours on Garden Warfare 2, and 250 hours on Call of Duty. I'm counting all the miscellaneous games that I played that probably individually take up under 250 hours. They probably total to about 2,000 hours. And worst of all, I probably watched about 1,000 to 2,000 hours of people actually playing video games. And all in all, that totals up to well over 10,000 hours of my life consuming and playing video games. And you can't blame me when it was my only escape from foster care. I felt like I had no friends, I was constantly isolated, so the best way to enjoy my life was to not socialise with the people around me because I didn't feel like they cared enough about me. But instead I turned to video games as my source of creativity. Being able to socialise with people online rather than in real life was a lot more appealing to my Asperger's brain. As video games let me control what I wanted to do, they were pre predictable and they allowed me to level up in the virtual world instead of the real world and face the harsh reality of where my life was heading. All in all, video games heavily stunted my development and I'm gonna help you identify if you also have a video game addiction and the steps that I follow to try and quit. So first of all, let's identify, do you have a video game addiction? Realistically, the term addiction is something that describes a, an activity that you partake in that you cannot function without. In other words, you're heavily dependent on it to get through day-to-day -day life. And that was the case for me. Uh, when I got back from school after being bullied all day, I'd just hop on, hop on Fortnite, hop on a game with my online friends and just forget about it because I didn't need to socialize with them then. I was I was safe, I was comfortable, I was in my own home and I could be powerful in the virtual world. I didn't have to uh, stand up to my bullies in the real world when I could be powerful in Fortnite. I could be level 100 on Fortnite. So if video games are a form of an escape for you that you can't live without, then most likely it is an addiction. If you can't go maybe say a week without playing video games, then chances are you probably have an addiction to video games. Because video games aren't inherently a bad thing, it's just that with all things it needs to be done in moderation and how much you play doesn't necessarily determine the addiction, it's whether you rely on it for your source of happiness. Like you could be the most successful person ever and play four hours of video games a day. Or on the other hand, you could be a very unsuccessful person, play it for one, one hour a day and that is your escape, that is your hit and that is what is an addiction is. In other words, any waking free time that you get is spent on video games. So we've established that time is not the main factor in a video game addiction, so what is? So the time you spend playing video games doesn't necessarily correlate to being addicted to them. However, if you are addicted to video games in a way that it's your main source of happiness, then most likely the time will also grow exponentially too. So now we've worked out that time is not the enemy, when should you actually play video games? Personally, I view video games as any other source of entertainment. It's not really productive as maybe playing an instrument, going on a walk, hitting a workout is. It's a form of entertainment such as watching a TV show or watching a movie and it should be placed into that category. It's not productive as many of people want to view it as. They realistically are a waste of time if you're not really having much gain from them. You can have fun from them, but if you're not really gaining much about yourself, you're not able to spend time with friends playing it, then in my opinion, it's kind of a waste of time if you're not gaining anything from the video game. So putting them into the entertainment category, I realistically think that you should, once you've done all the tasks you need to do for the day, productive tasks, that's when you can introduce an entertainment block at the end of your tasks as a reward. As if you've heard, you probably heard, 
the, the uh, phrase eat the frog, which means to get the hardest task, the most boring mundane task of your day done first, whether that be your nine to five or whether it be a school, whether it be a workout, whichever is the most haunting to you, you get that out of the way first and then you unwind. But you don't want to unwind to the point where it's going to disrupt your next day or how productive you are the next day. So you need to limit the time, but it's also important where you place the block of time that you dedicate to unwinding and genuinely having fun from video games instead of using them as a crutch to support your, your life. So typically, let's say, I don't play video games anymore, but if I was to, first I'd wake up maybe 7, 8 a.m. I'd get my workout done. I'd get all my meals in, I'd go to university, I'd record a video, I'd hang out with friends maybe, and then maybe once I got back, it was about 8 p.m., I'd, I'd play video games for maybe an hour till 9 p.m., then get ready for bed, sleep for 10 p.m. Then that, that way it's not gonna affect my next day, I'm not st staying up all day, all night, and I'm not having that that dopamine and that, that serotonin hit so early in the day where it's gonna disrupt the things that are actually going to propel me forward in life. And because video games were a source of socialization for me, you've got to realize that it's better to play video games with real people that you know. Yes, it's nice to play with online friends, but I personally believe that if you can play with real people that you interact with on a daily basis, that's a good way to strengthen connections. And playing alone is I guess I say less productive to playing in a group of friends that you know. Like you'll find you'll find that the less you play video games, the more people will want to play video games with you. Because if you're if you're that guy that's constantly online playing video games, and you join join a uh, Xbox party or whatever, or a Discord call, you're kind of like you don't get greeted. Like when when I quit playing video games for ages, and I remember last year OG Fortnite came back, and all my friends were messaging me to come on and play it and I was kind of like oh I don't know if I should but once I got on I had a lot of fun because I was playing with people that I knew in real life they were excited to see me and actually had a lot of fun and gained a lot of social fun from it and it was just like any other hobby or social social activity it was recreational I left it to the end of the day and it was fun and I didn't depend on it. But naturally, like me, you probably will find that once you take up more responsibility, it'll be harder to actually fit video games into your schedule and you want to prioritize other things, whether, whether that's becoming better in a certain productive hobby or maybe you wanna do content creation like I'm doing, which I prioritize highly over actual video games. You'll want to prioritize a skill learning a high a high value skill that can actually just move you forward in life instead of holding you back so personally i just lost interest for video games i haven't played video games for like i could probably say about three months um my steam account it's got zero hours on it epic games account i've uninstalled every single game on my system and i have no i have no motivation or urge or itch to play video games and if I was to in the future, it would purely be with friends or in short bursts alone if I was waiting to do something. So I suggest that instead of trying to actively quit video games, you just put them lower down in your priority list and you make sure you realise that it's a form of entertainment at the end of the day. It's not a part of your life. It's just something that you can sink a bit of time into enjoy and then just continue with your regular schedule and that's how you have to view it you don't need to actively go cold turkey it's not like you're dealing with a drug addiction maybe maybe if it's really extreme to the point where you may be staying inside and become a bit isolated maybe playing upwards of eight plus hours a day then yeah maybe you might have to go cold turkey or seek professional help if you're maybe saying say like just play like two four hours a day maybe before you get all your important stuff done or it's limiting how much you can really grow, then I suggest a point trying to put it, take on more responsibilities and put it lower in your priority list. Play video games less, but make the times that you play video games more valuable and enjoyable. So that covers everything I have to say about video games today. If you have any comments, leave them in the description below. Comment section below, apologies, my brain's not in it today, but 
yeah, thank you for watching and hopefully this video helped you. Stay curious.